Hi everyone, welcome back. So a new year for many people is another chance to start off with a clean slate, change bad habits and establish new routines that will ultimately improve their lives. And as we all know, it's easier said to, uh, to set a new year's resolution than to actually stick to it throughout an entire year especially during a pandemic. So our next guest obtained her professional coaching certification in 2015 from NYU and helps people achieve happiness as success in their lives. And joining us to give us some New Year's resolution tips to achieve inner success, please welcome life and career coach, Sarah Bogdansky. Hi and welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Do you feel very hopeful for 2021? I do. I do. I feel this really great spirit. Um, I've been feeling it with my family, my friends, my clients, everyone I'm talking to. Everyone just seems really excited to start this new year. Were you very busy in 2020? Oh yeah. 2020 was a busy year, um, but it was a magnificent year in that way for me because I was able to work with so many amazing people all over the country and, you know, people really needed support. So, I was so happy that I could, you know, partner with people and helping them de-stress, work through anxiety. You know, everyone was dealing with the pandemic. Um, so just collectively like working together through that, it was, it was really beautiful. And so the reason I'm even asking all of that is because even though we started a new year, there's this energy that kind of seeped into 2021 that really didn't, I guess, and maybe I'm speaking from a personal perspective, really bring in any enthusiasm to want to set like big resolutions. You know, it's an annual thing that we all do. But yeah, I think this year it's more along the lines of, of undoing certain things from 2020. So can we talk about New Year's resolutions from yeah. that perspective? Sure, let's do it. So what do you feel or what have you been hearing is a primary resolution that people have been setting? I think, you know, with the pandemic, it, it's just been a tough time, right? And I think, you know, it was about survival, right? So, you know, a lot of goals people had last year kind of went to the wayside. Um, you know, everyone's in their home 24 seven working, a lot of people working from home, um, parenting, you know, having their kids home, homeschooling, you know. So across the board, people were home. And I think that a lot of habits formed, which is understandable, right? It's all good, right? We were going through this unprecedented time and it was, it was about figuring out how do I survive through this? Um, so coming into this year, I think people are, you know, excited to see, okay, even though the pandemic isn't over, um, there are glimpses of hope, right? We have the vaccines. Things, mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, people are trying to figure out, well, how, how can I start moving towards some of those goals I had? Or what are my new goals now that I've sort of spent all this time um, thinking a lot more about what's really important to me now, right? The world has flip-flopped flip upside down. What's really important? So, you know, there's people, it goes across the board. You know, people want to do big things. You know, people want to go after their dream job, finally. People want to start that side business. It, it even can be things, you know, I'm hearing a lot of people that are like, you know, I got to spend so much time with my family that I never had before. Right. So now I want to make that really a part of our routine, even as my kids are going back to school. Like, how do, how do we create more special moments as a family? So I'm sure yeah. I'm going to talk forward. I'm, I'm picking up on what you're saying. And as a coach, uh, I, I guess what, what I'm really focused on is, okay, so because you, 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 you mentioned certain things that we all, I think, share. Um, with regards to possibly gaining weight, you know, I call it the Rona 15 um, over here. That's what we refer to it as. And it is a, a bit of an issue. And it is something I think um, I myself have to work on. Um, however, it, it becomes that question, which you just mentioned of like, what's really important? What really matters? Obviously our health matters, but is it about the losing weight or is it about, you know, sustaining health? Exactly. Exactly. First of all, yes, the Rona 15, very, very <laughs> real. Yep. Um, and listen, it's not a bad resolution to say, hey, I want to, you know, work on that, getting rid of that Rona 15 or the Rona 5 or the Rona 30, whatever it might be, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's about getting, going a little deeper and thinking about, well, why do I want to get rid of it? 
right? Why do I want to lose weight? Is it because, you know, living a healthy lifestyle is really meaningful for me because I want to have energy to, you know, show up to my job well? Is it because I want to, you know, have more energy to play with my kids at the end of the day? Is it because I really want to wear those skinny jeans I bought, you know, the beginning of 2020? I want to, you know, wear those again and feel confident. Great. So I think it's just finding the real meaning behind some of the resolutions and goals we have. I always encourage clients, um, instead of working on goals or resolutions right away, really work on your values first, right? Mm. So how do you want to show up in your life, right? Is it that you want to live a healthier lifestyle? Great. If that's your value, then what are some action items or goals I can have around that value? So for example, that could be, you know, I'm going to try to get an extra hour of sleep every night from what I get now. I'm going to try to eat more vegetables every day. I'm going to, you know, walk every day. You know, the gyms, a lot of gyms are still closed. How can I squeeze in some fitness every day? Um, but get to the value and the meaning behind something first, because that's going to really motivate you versus, right. you know, just like kind of this external sort of force. that somebody Right. Has. I get it. So how do you recommend like one start it, it, independently, right? Obviously you're a coach, you're there to hold people accountable, but if people need to, is it something that you write down? Like, how do you, yeah. how do you place them in columns? Because what you're saying, it, it, it totally makes sense. However, it becomes a question of holding oneself accountable. It's easy when you have to answer to someone, but when you're having that internal dialogue, it, it's easier to call, you know what, I'm going to skip today, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, and that's where the, the issues lie because you're kind of resorting back to old habits. So how do you really maintain the new development? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So, um, you know, to be self-motivated, a couple tips I recommend. So the first thing is I'm a huge believer in writing things down and not in your phone, not in your computer, like get a notebook or a journal and a pen or a pencil and write it down. Get those things out of your head and onto paper. Um, I recommend writing down, you know, I call it vision writing. So writing down, it could be a list, it could be a short paragraph, but basically write like, what do you want your life to look like? You know, it could be, you know, I want to be really fit and healthy. I want to be able to cook dinner every night for my family. I want to start my side business finally, whatever that might be, write it all down. Um, think about what values are important to you and write those down, right? Is it that you want to live a healthier lifestyle? Is it that you want to, you know, achieve more professionally this year? Again, millions of things. It depends on the person, but I, I'm a big fan. Just write it all down, get it onto paper, but then start small, right? Like, don't try to accomplish five things tomorrow, um, pick one or two things out of the list you've made. And it's like, okay, out of the seven things I wrote down, these are one or two things that are really important for me to focus on at least the beginning of the year. So pick those two things and then start thinking like, okay, this week, what's one thing I can do this week? So if it's, you know, I want to live a healthier lifestyle, maybe this week it's, you know what, I'm not exercising at all right now. What I'm going to do is, you know, for 10 minutes a day, I'm just going to get out, you know, my yoga mat and I'm going to do some stretching or maybe I'm going to check out a virtual. There's so many virtual classes right now. I'm going to check out a virtual Pilates class and do that once a week. Whatever it might be, start small. Small, oh, yeah. Commit to that one small thing. And once you master that, then you can build on it, right? So after a few weeks, if you've been doing that one yoga class a week, it's like, okay, I'm doing yoga once a week. Okay, now that I've mastered that, it's part of my routine. What can I add? Okay. I'm going to eat, you know, vegetables every day for lunch. I'm going to put, make sure there's, you know, half my plate is vegetables. Okay. So let's, let's start working on that. So I always say, start small, take baby steps. Um, and in terms of holding yourself accountable, I mean, I'll use the working out example. Cause I think that's one that resonates with all of us or many of us, you know, a lot of times it's like, get up in the morning and it's like, oh, I'm tired. I just want to hit this yeah. button. I don't want to get up. I don't want to exercise. Again, in that moment, you're feeling unmotivated, you're feeling tired. Try not to decide what action you take based on your feeling. Go back to your values. So if your value uh, is, I want to be healthy. I want to live a healthy lifestyle. 
go back to that because that'll help you make choices in your life, big and small versus just the immediate feeling you have, which right. as we know, feelings come and go, right? Right. So always go back to the value. And that's why I'm, I'm like values, values, values. Um, it's, get it's, really clear on those and let those yeah. be your guiding factor and guiding force. Oh my gosh. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was yeah, wonderful. Sure. Advice. I mean, I'm, I'm taking it to heart because it's true. It's very easy to make yourself wrong and then give up and then go, you know what? Oh, I tried. And it's like, no, it's not about that. It's about like, Hey, um, how is it that you want to show up for yourself? which is how this whole segment opened up. And I just want to thank you for bringing it here to our viewers. Um, I understand you offer a, a, a free consultation, right? For uh, any initial people that may want to familiarize themselves with your services. I do. So I offer a free 30 minute phone consult um, for anyone interested in working with me. Um, and so you can contact me through my website, um, or social media, you can contact me and set that up. And I'm, you know, currently taking new clients. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah Bogdeski, for being here with Thank us you. on Open. <laughs> We're great to be here. Oh, man. I, I, I really, I really appreciate everything you just shared with us. And I just want to share with our viewers, if you want to book a, a coaching consult with Sarah, Sarah Bogdansky, Bogdansky. Uh, exactly. you can visit Sarah Bogdansky dot com and make sure to follow her on Instagram at Coach Sarah Bogdansky. All right, Thank we you. have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a documentary highlighting childcare providers. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 